Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael in for France Stoddard. Researchers at the University of Vermont have documented the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on food access and security. The bottom line, more Vermonters and their families report going hungry. UVM's work was done in collaboration with researchers at John Hopkins University. The joint study found food insecurity has increased 33% since the start of the pandemic in March of 2020. Adding further to the economic impact are prices at the pump and at the grocery store. So today we're gonna to discuss what hunger looks like in Vermont with leaders on the front line of getting food to Vermonters in need. Joining us from the Vermont Food Bank are its CEO, John Sales, and Public Affairs Officer, Kerry Stoller. I wanna wish good afternoon to each of you and thank you for taking the time to be with us. Thanks for having us. So, I will. Glad to be here. Well, thank you both. Uh, Kerry, to, to, to get us started, I want to be sure we're all in the same wavelength here. What is food insecurity? How is it different from hunger? Yeah, I think that's a great question and something that confuses a lot of people. Food insecurity is essentially the um, technical term for a household not having enough food or enough access to food. Um, it's a technical term that the USDA uses to assess what a, a household's ability to have enough food for the time period they purchase their food for. Are they worried they're going to run out of food before they can buy more or get more? Um, they couldn't afford to buy the food that they wanted to purchase. Um, they, they were skipping meals. People in the household ate less food than they felt like they should. And that's where it starts to intersect with hunger. Hunger is really that individual experience of not um, being able to eat enough food or the, the condition that where you feel hungry, right? That's an individual piece. And food insecurity really talks about households and, and the larger community impact of uh, low food access. Kerry, your explanation makes a lot of sense. And John, I suspect that's why charitable organizations like the Food Bank have moved to food insecurity as a way to, to talk about these issues. Is that fair? That is fair. You know, it's also the fact that food insecurity is really just financial insecurity. And we talk about it that way a lot. Um, when, when people are hungry, it's because in this country, they don't have enough money to buy the food that they want and need. Um, and talking about it as food insecurity lets us link that to it's really financial insecurity and those broader economic systems that we need to get in line so that everyone has the opportunity to really ideally go to the store like people with money do and buy all the food that they need that their families want and need. Well, you're getting at uh, where we're going to head next, which was to show some of the findings from the joint UVM John Hopkins study. Uh, Carrie, as we take a look, can you share some information about how many Vermonters are, are food insecurity, uh, food insecure rather, and, and how does food insecurity affect or impact people from all walks of life? Yeah, I think this is, I just have to express gratitude to the team at UVM for doing this work because until the pandemic, we didn't really have um, such rapidly updated data about how people were experiencing food insecurity in our communities in Vermont. And this team has really opened a window for us in the work that we do to help us understand the experience on the ground at any given time. So this latest study shows us that two in five people or four in 10 people in Vermont are experiencing food insecurity um, and have experienced that in the past year. So if you think about the folks that you know, I'm sure you can think about five people. Um, two of them have potentially experienced this. And there are a lot of factors that go into that. And you'll see in this, this um, graphic right now, a lot of it has to do with, you know, cost and how long you can store your food and you know what what happened to your household income and i think the pandemic really normalized the conversation around people 
having those struggles, right? So many people lost their jobs. So many people changed employment. So many people had some sort of disruption in their normal operation that that would cause them to, you know, have to have to pull from different areas of their budget or shrink their budget. And often where that happens is around your grocery budget. You got to pay your rent. You got to pay your light bill. You got to put gas in the car. But but, you know, you can spend less at the grocery store. It's really the only flexible place that many of us have. Do we know whether uh, food insecurity is connected in any way to diet? And does that even matter? Uh, Sure, we do know that. And it does matter. Um, So the most, the healthier, more nourishing foods are the more expensive ones. If you go to the grocery store, you walk around the perimeter of the store, it's fresh produce, it's the bakery, it's meat, dairy. Um, and that is what, you know, the, the food pyramid or my plate now tells us to eat. Um, but that is the most expensive part. It's the, the low cost processed foods that are in the center of the store. And so really what we're trying to do at the Vermont food bank, as we get food to people who don't have the resources to afford enough food is to make sure that we're getting the kinds of foods that people want and need. Um, And we actually ask folks, what kinds of food do you want? And number one is fresh fruits and vegetables. Number two is lean meats and dairy. Um, And then, you know, breads and down and, you know, soda and snack food doesn't even register. Um, So we know people know how to eat healthy. It's just a matter of getting access to those foods. You know, there are ways to to eat healthy on a budget. Um, And I think I think we all work on that. Right. It's it's not just people who are food insecure or are categorized as food insecure. Um, And also there are plenty of people with lots of means who eat very poorly. So poor nutrition is not a socioeconomic issue. It's really a cultural issue. Well, uh, those are all excellent points. And back to where you started, the connections that the food bank is making through local food shelves and pantry, uh, just phenomenal. And it's, those are the programs that the food bank is involved in. They specifically target getting fresh fresh local food into our local food shelves. As an example, Across the Fence recently featured uh, earlier this year showing how the Putney food shelf has partnered with a local farm to provide fresh greens. John, talk about some of these programs and the way the food bank is involved in getting fresh local foods onto the plates and into the cupboards of Vermonters. Sure. You know, we've always worked with local farmers as long as I've been at the food bank. And the farmers want to help. You know, there's, a, there's several ways we do it. One is gleaning, which is what you're seeing here. Um, we actually have volunteers that will go into the, into the fields and, and harvest the crops that the farmers aren't going to harvest. Either it's something that's regrowing or the season's getting to an end or it's too big or too small. Uh, we also purchase at the food bank a lot of food from local farms. And that's where this, the Putney food shelf um, may have been um, getting some of the funding for their program. Uh, we have a program called Vermonters Feeding Vermonters. Last year it was really uh, over, I think about $1.5 million in purchases from Vermont farms. Some of that goes in grants to small food shelves like Putney, who then contract with the local farmer for greens or a couple of CSA shares. Um, really giving the farmers a kind of a, a guarantee of an income and a, a customer and also connecting people in local communities with the local farm food that they might not otherwise be able to afford. I think that creates new customers. So you've both talked about food insecurity really being on par with economic insecurity. So Carrie, there's, there's, there's an answer to this, I think that we know. How have higher prices at the grocery store affected, impacted donations at food banks or local food shelves? I actually think that people have, have become more familiar with the challenge of food insecurity and have stepped up their donations to their local food shelves. Um, I will say that maybe that's cash donations. I don't know how that works for food donations at each of our network partners, but I think the pandemic has really um, helped everyone see that food is one of the most variable challenges that people deal with, right? So it's the quickest to show up Um, and one of the most uh, universal that we can all understand together. And I think Vermonters have really um, seen that as an opportunity to help their neighbors 
it, both through our network system and in other ways. There have been a lot of mutual aid groups that have popped up that have really done uh, a world of difference for the folks in their community. And I, I, I continue, but I also know there's a level of fatigue that people run into, right? Where it just, it's a long time. This is a long crisis already and is continuing. What we're seeing from this data from UVM is that it's actually not getting better from the food security perspective. It's starting to get worse. So I think as long as people understand that, people in Vermont are really willing and able to step up for their neighbors, they, they do. Can, can are there estimates? Are you able? We talked about. You just made the point how long this has been going on. How much food are we going to need to support Vermonters just say through the end of this year for another couple of months into 2023? Well, I wish that my crystal ball worked better than it does, but mm -hmm. I will say that the last crisis that we experienced that's anything like this was the Great Recession in 2008. And from a data perspective, it took about mm -hmm. 10 years for Vermont to return to pre-recession food security levels. And at that time, we're talking like, you know, 10% pre-recession, 14% at the height, and then back down to 10. And I still think that 10 is too much for people in Vermont. 10% of our neighbors experiencing food insecurity is uh, not something that we should all be comfortable with. Right now, that data is showing that 40% of people are experiencing food insecurity. So we have a little bit longer way to go, I think, than last time. And I've got time here for one last question. Uh, uh, John, I haven't given you much time to answer this, but people are aware there was a headline uh, back in 2021 of a $9 million donation to the food bank from Mackenzie Scott. How are you using that money? So half of that money is going to the need that Carrie was just talking about, um, meeting the need, the, the really exasperated need for a uh, people in the era of COVID for food. The other half of it is going to trying new things, um, ways that we hope will actually help decrease the need for food assistance in the future. Um, we're calling that our innovation lab and our deep communities work. And people will be able to find more information about that on our website in the coming months. We're really just getting going. Well, I'm going to direct people to the website so that they can learn more about some of the issues we've talked about today. And perhaps even more importantly, um, there are links to the more than 215 food shelves in communities around the state. So you can go to the website and click on the link to find a food shelf. That is all the time we have for today. John and Carrie, I want to thank you very, very much for being with us from the Food Bank. Thank you. Thanks, Will. You're, you're welcome. And that is our program for today. We know you have choices, so thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael, inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.